Idaho has four volcanoes, and one of them is here at Craters of the Moon National Monument, a bizarre and blackened landscape of recently deposited basaltic lava. And the volcano here is overdue to erupt sometime very soon. How do we know this? Well, an eruption here happens like clockwork every two to three thousand years, a total of eight times over the past 15,000 years. The last eruption occurred about 2,100 years ago, so it's time. In fact, scientists think it's far more likely for the next eruption in the lower 48 of the U.S. to be here than other locations like Yellowstone. And if you want to peek into the future to know what this impending eruption will look like, you just need to tour the end result of the eight prior episodes protected at the stunning and strange Craters of the Moon National Monument. So today, we're jumping in our geologic time machine to explore these unique features from the past that are bound to happen again soon. Craters of the Moon is an inland ocean of lava fields scattered with cinder cones, spatter cones, novitudes, and other amazing basaltic features along the Great Rift. Now, the Great Rift is a series of fractures in the Earth's crust that extends more than 50 miles along the Snake River Plain throughout the park. The craters of the moon lava field formed from magma that came up along the Great Rift and extruded out from fissures during those eight prior eruptions to form the rock we see today. And the field has some amazing examples of how molten basaltic lava can solidify into different types of rock. Basalt lava flows like this come in two major forms, and you'll find both of them at craters of the moon, a hoey hoey and ah ah. The hoey hoey has a smooth, billowy, or ropey surface, and it forms from lava that erupted at a slower rate traveling at a slower speed with less viscosity. Ah uh -uh has a rough, jagged, or clinky surface and formed from lava that erupted quickly under great strain and with more viscosity. The eruptions that occur at Craters of the Moon are likely very similar to those happening recently at Kilauea Volcano in Hawaii. In Idaho, the force of rising magma causes a section of the Great Rift to pull apart. Now magma then rises through this crack and the gases in that magma expand and the eruptions begin as a curtain of fire, sending up blankets of fiery, frothy, fluid magma in low level eruptions. After hours or days, the level of gases in the magma decreases and the eruption becomes more localized, eventually forming into individual lava fountains that may have historically reached 1,000 feet high. As this lava ejects into the air, it solidifies during flight and rains down to form the cinder cones that you find in the park, the largest of which is Big Cinder Butte at 700 feet tall and visible in the distance with a short hike to the top of Inferno Cone, which is just inside the park. We're on top of the Inferno Cone. It's about a quarter mile hike up to the top here. And from here, you can see the cinder cones along the Great Rift, particularly to the south. Now, this is an amazing location to take in the Great Rift. And the Great Rift was the area that about 15,000 years ago split open and started erupting lava, resulting in the area we know today as Craters of the Moon. If you reach down and look at the cinders blanketing these cones, you'll find that they are very light and have a lot of holes because of the gas they held when formed. You hear that? That's it scraping. It's got some gemmy stuff in it. It looks pretty. Look at that. That's beautiful. So you see all that? That's all this. All this. Isn't that amazing? Giant mountains of little pebbles. Same that rock. Science is amazing. It's a splatter cone. Splatter cones are like mini volcanoes. They're the volcanoes that last. Hurrah! And these are left behind by, like, bubbles from volcanic eruptions. Spatter cones develop later in the eruptive cycle and are smaller than cinder cones, rarely more than 50 feet high. And they form as small lumps of lava spit a short distance up and then clump around the edge of a small central vent in a ring. You can see examples of these at spatter cone trail. The sides of a spatter cone are sometimes so steep that they preserve ice and snow inside from the hot summer or sun. Like the very fun snow cone, which has been known to hold ice all summer. As the eruption continues, lava flows pour more slowly out of vents along the ground. This may continue anytime from days to years, and this is the source of most of the rock in the park. 
These lava flows can also form lava caves and tubes like Indian Cave. This forms kind of like a chocolate shell of Earth. As the lava surface crusts over and thickens, it insulates the interior, allowing the inside to stay molten, while the outside is hard. Once the eruption stops, the tubes eventually empty of molten lava, leaving the rocky crust behind. And with some special planning to protect the bats that call these caves home, you can hike inside these lava tubes and see the features like lava stalactites and lava curves that form as the molten lava recedes from inside the cave. We are at the cave trail at Greatest of the Moon National Monument. Caves made of, guess what? Our sponsor, Igni, yes! Igni, yes! Caves! Come on, let's go. Today we're going in the Indian Demo, which is an 820 foot long cave. Come on, let's go in. This one has collapsed like a souffle. Collapse is the destiny of these lava tubes. The pressure builds up, they can't support them anymore. An interesting feature of Craters of the Moon is that it's considered volume predictable. It produces the same volume of lava during each episode. So based on past explosions, scientists think that the next eruption will produce one to one and a half cubic miles of lava. Well, Craters of the Moon will almost certainly erupt again, and likely sometime soon, is not considered a high-risk volcano. The primary hazard will likely be slow-moving lava flows that may travel up to 20 miles from the source. Now, these may impact highways that pass near the park and threaten rangeland and farms, but the nearby populated communities are not expected to be directly impacted. So we may even be able to see the eruption in our lifetime. You can bet if that happens, we'll check it out and share it with you. And thanks for watching. You didn't literally mean bet, right? Are you betting? No. Ah.